Welcome to our Saturday Bible Discussion, Speaking Words of Life, God's Warning of Hypocrisy. I pledge allegiance, I pledge my life to my Savior, Jesus Christ, for the blood that he shed because in my sins I was dead. And to the Lord God above, who from heaven to earth spreads his love, on this we stand. Jesus is seated at God's right hand. He's the chief cornerstone, the first son born with sanctification and justification for all. One Father, one Son, one Spirit made one. I pledge allegiance. I pledge my life. I pledge my love to Christ's sacrifice. Happy Saturday, people of God. We are here with warnings from Father God of hypocrisy. Amen. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. Beware of their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything will be revealed all that is secret will be made public. People of God, we are here with this message from our Father, His Son, and His Spirit concerning hypocrisy. Now, what is the definition of hypocrisy? I have two. A person who pretends to have virtues, morals, or religious beliefs and principles, etc., that they do not actually possess. The second one is a person whose desires is for public approval, especially one whose private life and their opinions and actions differ from their public statements, how they appear in public. That's why character and reputation should never be confused. A person's reputation is what people think about them. But our character is what God knows about us. Living as we do in an image-conscious society, great emphasis is placed on how we appear in public, people of God. So businessmen and women are told how to dress for success and are encouraged to wear the right kind of power suits and shoes. Politicians listen to focus groups and watch polls carefully to monitor any changes necessary in their image. Most adults, our young people, and even teenagers are ever conscious of public pressure to accept children today insist on the right kind of, ge of gear in order to be one of the cool kids. Imagine and public personnel, reputation, these are what really matter to our culture. But let's be real and truthful. What a person is in private is what he or she is in the eyes of God. In God's eyes, our character is not given as much attention. In fact, we are told repeatedly that private life is of no concern to anyone other than the individual and God. But public image is of concern to the masses. Image and public personal reputation. These are what really matter to our culture. Amen. 
Jesus knew full well that public image can be a projection of what is probably false. In fact, he gives us a clear example of this people of God. He warns, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. Beware of their hypocrisy. The Pharisees were masters of image or disguise, I should say. They were practiced at projecting a piety that was not a reflection of their inner private reality. Jesus had a name for it and he called it hypocrisy. Their lives were an act, people of God, a charade, a travesty. Jesus went on, the time is coming when everything will be revealed. All that is secret will be made public. The barrier between private and public will be breached. The gap between what people think we are and what God knows we are will be bridged. There will be no difference between private and public life. Everything private will be made public. We will be known as fully as God knows us. So how should we respond, people of God? Should we be more concerned about how we appear to God than about how we are viewed by people? What we are in private, our, our character, should take priority over how we appear in public, our reputation. Reputation is not insignificant because it can be inaccurate. Good people are sometimes given a bad name, while bad people are often praised to the skies. But it will be, but it will, will not be so in heaven. What the world needs are people of sound character, people of God who earn a solid reputation. Their character pleases God and their reputation blesses humanity. People of God, again, this is warnings against hypocrisy and we will be giving you examples by scripture. Our Father, His Son, and His Spirit is simply saying, be real. All through this study, we see warnings to Jesus' disciples, His people, to not be hypocrites, but in whatever we do, let it be done with a sincere heart. Amen. Meanwhile, the crowds grew until thousands were milling about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his, his disciples and warned them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything that is covered up will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you than that, after that. But I'll tell you whom to fear. Fear God, who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he is the one to fear. Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 6 and light will shine in on the darkness and illuminate it. Our Father in heaven sees everything. That's what we really have to be clear about people of God. Nothing we do is hidden from him. And sometimes we want to act like it by going into the bathroom or out, outside or go to the bar or whatever we want to do in order to fulfill the flesh and not the spirit but so we must check 
the real or true intentions of our heart in everything we do. We must check our true motives. People of God, we must do good to please God and not anyone else or anything else. Amen. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, <coughs> do not sound a trumpet before as you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. But surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. See, we're talking about being a hypocrite, and we're giving you different examples throughout the Bible. So listen and write, take notes and write the scriptures down. The term hypocrite, as used here, describes people who do good acts for appearances only not out of compassion or other good motives. Their actions may be good, people of God, but their motives and our motives can sometimes be hollow. These empty acts are their only reward, but God will reward those who are sincere in their faith. Father God warns us not to be fake. He wants our actions in private and public to line up. He warns us to keep our heart truthful before him and not for public approval. Amen. When Jesus says not to tell your left hand what your right hand is doing, he is teaching that our motives for giving to God and to others must be pure. It is easy to give with mixed emotions. To do something for someone if it will benefit you in return. But believers should avoid all scheming and give for the pleasure of giving as a response to God's love for them. People of God, we must ask ourselves this question. Why do we give? Is it easier to do what's right when we gain recognition or praise? To be sure our motives are not selfish, we should do good deeds quietly and in secret. With no thought of reward, Jesus says we should check our motives in three areas. Generosity, prayer, and our fasting. Those acts should not be self-centered, but God-centered, people of God. Done not to make us look good, but to make God look good. And the reward is God's promises. And his promises is not material things. And it is never given to those who seek it. Doing something only for ourselves is not a loving sacrifice, people of God. With your next good deed, we have to ask ourselves, would we still do this? if no one ever knew we did it. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. As surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. People of God, 
we thank you and praise you. This means do everything with a sincere heart. Don't fake it in public because that's the only reward you will receive. In this scripture, Jesus gives his disciples again an example of how they should really start off praying. Amen. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 14. Now, people of God, let's take this scripture apart for more understanding. Uh, some people, especially the religious leaders, wanted to be seen as holy. And public prayer was one of the ways to get attention. But Jesus saw through their self-righteous acts, however, and taught that the essence of prayer is not public style, but private communication with the Father. There is a place for public prayer, but to pray only where others will notice you indicates that your real audience is really not to God. Some have concluded that Jesus' directions about private prayer call into question all public prayer. We see Jesus' own practice as an indication that this was not his intentions. The gospel records Jesus in prayer both privately and publicly, people of God. Again, Jesus was drawing attention to the motives behind their actions. This point really wasn't a choice between public and private prayer, but between heartfelt and hypocritical prayer. When we ask, when we ask to pray in public, focus on addressing God and not how you're coming across to others. Amen. Jesus goes on to teach his disciples that repeating the same words over and over like a magic indication is no way to ensure that God will hear your prayer. It's not wrong to come to God many times with the same request. Jesus encourages persistent prayer, praying without ceasing, but he condemns the shadow repetition of words that are not offered with sincere heart. We can never pay too much if our prayers are honest and sincere. People of God, before you start to pray, let's make sure we mean what we say. Uh, repetitive prayer, Jesus was saying, uh, was like incantations, okay? Uh, here we see a pattern to be imitated as well as duplicated. We should praise God and pray for his will to work in the world. We should pray for others' needs and our daily needs and pray for her help in our daily struggles. People of God, to what extent do you use 
the items in the Lord's Prayer to guide our own prayers. Do we still do this? Moving on, the phrase, your kingdom come, is a reference to God's spiritual reign. God's kingdom was announced in a covenant with Abraham. It's present in Christ's reign in believers' hearts and will be complete when all evil is destroyed and God establishes the new heaven and earth. Amen, people of God. When we pray, may your will be done, we are not resigning ourselves to faith, but praying that God's perfect plan and purpose will be accomplished in this world as well as in the next. People of God, how does God accomplish his will on earth? He does it largely through people willing to obey him. This part of prayer allows us to offer ourselves as doers of God's will, asking him to guide, lead, and give us the means to accomplish his plans and purposes. People of God, let's move on, and when we pray, give us today our daily bread we are acknowledging that God is our sustainer and provider. It is a misconception to think that we provide for our needs ourselves. We must trust God daily to provide what he knows we need. God warns us sometimes but sometimes he allows us to be tested by temptation. As disciples, we should pray to be delivered from these things, these trying times, and for deliverance from Satan, the evil one. And his deceit, all Christians struggle, that's something we must know, with temptation. Sometimes it is so subtle that we don't even realize what is happening to us. But God promises that he won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. People of God, ask God to help you recognize the temptation and to give you strength to overcome it and to choose God's way instead of ours. In this passage, God also gives a startling warning about forgiveness. If we refuse to forgive others, God will also refuse to forgive us. Why? Because when we don't forgive others, we are denying our common ground as sinners in need of God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness of sin is not the direct result of our forgiving others, but it is based on our realizing what forgiveness means. It is easy to ask God for forgiveness, but difficult to grant it to others. Whenever we ask God to forgive us for our sins, we should ask ourselves, have we forgiven the people who have wronged us? Now, let's move on to another example in scripture of how God is teaching us and war by warning us to be sincere and not hypocritical people. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. But surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. People of God, again, God tells us to not be a hypocrite. Fasting 
going without food in order to spend time in prayer is noble and it's difficult spiritually. But it gives us time to pray. It teaches us self-discipline. It reminds us that we can live with a lot less. Amen. And helps us to appreciate God's gift of life through Christ. Again, Jesus was not condemning fasting, but hypocrisy. Fasting in order to gain public approval is what he did not approve of. Jesus commended acts of self-sacrifice done in quiet and sincerely. He wanted people to adopt spiritual disciplines for the right reasons, not from a selfish desire for the praises of others. As we study, we see in Scripture that God wants us to pray, fast, and do good works, but with a sincere heart and not for public approval. So God warns us over and over to not be like the hypocrites. Remember, the meaning of hypocrisy basically means not living in private what is projected in public. Amen. Living a lie in public. Amen. Living a lie. Um, let me give you these meanings. The meaning of a sincere heart is a heart free of deceit and hypocrisy or falseness, earnestness. And I'm going to give you another meaning, and that's compassion. A feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate their suffering. As we always, we obey God's word. Okay, let me read this over people of God. And as always, when we obey God's word, he becomes a shelter, a refuge, and faith in God. As protector, he will carry us through all the dangers of fears in our lives. This should be a picture of how we should trust, trading all our fears for faith in God no matter how intense our fears. To do this, we must live the rest, we must live and rest in him by entrusting ourselves to his protection and helping and pledging, I'm sorry, our daily devotion to him, trusting that he will keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. And you are Christ, and Christ is God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 23. Amen. In every sense, we are Christ's body, his mind and spirit. We are members of his body, he says. Our bodies are Christ's temple, and we are his bond servants. Christ, who has made us children of his Father and fellow heirs of his estate, people of God. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. I give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. God's ability to direct our lives is far superior to our ability. Sometimes we are afraid of God's power and plan and purpose in our lives because we know his power would easily crush us if he used it against us. But don't be afraid, people of God, to let God correct your plans for his purpose. 
He will give you wisdom if you are willing. Remember, people in God, we must always give our very best to Father God with a sincere heart and not for others' attention. Our Heavenly Father desires spiritual sacrifice instead of physical ones. And because our citizenship is in the kingdom of heaven, this requires that we pledge to God our primary obedience and commitment. As God's followers, we have legitimate obligations to Father God. But it is important to keep our priorities straight. When the two authorities conflict, our duty to God always must come before the duty of the government. People of God, remember our lives bears God's image, and we belong to God. But truly are we giving God what is rightfully his and not being hypocritical, but with a sincere heart? Amen. People of God, let's repent and ask Father God to forgive us and give us a clean heart and receive a sincere heart of compassion in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, people of God, those were examples all throughout the Bible where people of God uh, were serving God and being fake. You know what I'm saying? They were, were sometimes being hypocritical, okay? And God wants to warn us and correct us by teaching us this is something that he is not pleased with. Amen. So... We ask that you would go over the scriptures, have your own worship time with God, and go through his word and study it, and then apply it to your life as we try to be everything God would have us to be, and we use the word, his word, and allow it to transform our lives, okay? But let me just say the prayer of forgiveness. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you want to get to know him, he is knocking at the door to your heart. Let him in with a sincere heart of compassion. Repeat after me, people, all who do want to, that want to ask God in their, want to ask Jesus in their lives and to God be the glory for everything he has done. Okay, repeat after me for the prayer of forgiveness, people of God. Uh, Lord, I've been living my life my own way. And Jesus, now I want to try to live it all your way. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and rose again for my justification come into my heart lord jesus and help me to be everything you created me to be forgive me of my sins and help me holy spirit to be what the father created me to be from the beginning repeat of i repent of all sin and ask that you give me a clean heart a sincere heart of compassion to serve you in Jesus name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, the Lord Jesus have come into your life. All of heaven is rejoicing and you go tell somebody because you should be so grateful for what God has done for you. That means he chose you. You're part of the chosen generation. So just take heart people of God in all you do, do it to the glory of God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Now the benediction, people of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. Okay, people of God, have a good rest of your weekend. And just go over this word when you get the time, because it 
is really something that spoke volume in my heart. And I had to repent, first of all, and ask God to uh, forgive me for sometimes doing things with the wrong motives. But to always, you know, like when I take care of my neighbor and do things for other people, uh, if I'm not doing it with uh, a sincere heart of compassion, then I should just say no. I think that would be better, you know. And so in, in knowing that, when I took my neighbor shopping yesterday, and I wasn't feeling good, people got because I had a fall. Okay, so pray for me. And then I just kept my mind stayed on why am I doing this? Amen. And then as I began to want to do it for God and say, I don't want to do it unless I'm doing it unto you. You know what I mean? I don't want no, I don't want, I don't want to toot no horn about it. I just want the reward that Jesus has for me in secret. Amen. And so people of God, just go over those words and, and, and repent if you, uh, are a child of God and you know that you've been doing this don't hide from God don't hide your nakedness bring the truth to him he loves it he loves our ugly truth better than he loves a lie amen okay now have a good rest of your weekend God love you God bless you is my prayer in Jesus name amen Turn down.